Uh, Vincent, we're all here tonight um, uh, to celebrate a glorious career of um, 10 years at, at Manchester City, but we're also here for something important as well. Uh, why did you choose this particular charity to, to help the homeless? Well, <clears throat> by now I'm, a, I'm an adopted Mancunian and uh, <laughs> this city has grown on me. Uh, I have a wife from Manchester, I have three kids who think they're more Mancunian than anything else. <laughs> is a problem I need to address <laughs> but uh, in all fairness I just feel that this place is able to do incredible things when they pull together and I want to uh, raise as many funds as I can today to uh, tackle the issue of homelessness in Manchester. Mm. And it, it's been 10 years, it's been an incredible journey I would imagine that over that 10 years the change in, in the success of the club has been quite remarkable hasn't it? Yeah it's been a transformation but I think along the years what I've been able to pick up on is uh, what was already there in Manchester City and has been there all the time is that kind of uh, attitude and I remember in the beginning it was more about thinking something wrong is going to happen no matter what mm. and, and, but also that get on with it attitude and, and it's, it's just suited me from day one and this club where it is today is, uh, it's unbelievable to, to have been a part of this journey. Mm. Attitude in Manchester? Who would have thought? It's a gift we have, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> what, how have you taken to the changes? Because some fans, you know, what well, like, like, sometimes they like it when it's, things are going against them. But there, is no, a small, there is a small section of City supporters who kind yeah. of hark back for the old days, but um, I love it. You know, I was, <laughs> I, when, when, when we left Main Road to go to the Etihad, um, I was a bit, why, why are we leaving Main Road? <laughs> But um, I think the changes have been amazing. The club is unrecognisable now. And the main difference is, what Vinny was saying about the attitude of City supporters of like, thinking everything was going to go wrong. What we had was this thing was when we got a good player, if we'd have had him without the money coming in, we'd think he's going to be gone in two seasons. He's going to be gone somewhere. It's going to be in Liverpool or Tottenham or somewhere. So we enjoyed it for where he was. We lived in the moment. Unfortunately, the moments were all pretty terrible. Um, but now, we managed to keep, we, well, we keep all of our great, and we buy other teams' great players. But, you know, to win the league three times, I never thought I'd ever see it. I never thought I'd ever see it. When we won the FA Cup for the first time in 30 odd years, uh, I'd have been happy with that, to be honest, just to be, you know, I mean, I wasn't even at Wembley, I was watching it on the telly in LA. What do you, what do you, what do you prefer for you? Winning. Standing in front of like a quarter of a million people or something at Nebworth, or watching City win a game to win the league? What's, I tell you, watching City is more nerve-wracking. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Because, yeah, because you're doing your thing, you're in control. Yeah, when, yeah, when, yeah, when you do, when, when I'm, when I'm yeah. doing my thing and it's the crowds and all that. Yeah, you're in control of it. When you're watching City and <laughs> like the big tense games, um, they're out of your control and anything, anything can happen. But um, people always say to me, "Would you rather give up such and such for City to win the Champions League?" It's like, aim for both. <laughs> aim for both all the yeah. time. Yeah, you mentioned the Champions League there. Is mm. it, would, would that be the, the big thing for you now? I mean, you've won league titles. Yeah, it, that, it, that has, little... to, it has to be. Um, I have to be honest that we did need that Premier League before, we did need the FA Cup before. But now I can see that you know, the importance of Champions League games have uh, also increased to, in, in City fans' hearts. Mm. Uh, I don't think it was ever at the forefront of any City fans' uh, dream in it the was, beginning. It was, you know, to be honest, before before uh, Sheikh Mansour arrived, you would see Middlesbrough or a team of that get into the League Cup final and you'd think, well, why can't we, if we just did that, <laughs> if we did that, Blackburn did that, if we did that, that would be enough, just that we had our day at Wembley and that would be it. Now, the Champions League, I guess, does it spoil you a little bit? Does the expectations just keep going higher? No. Well, I mean, we, I, we are spoiled. Yeah, well, yeah. no. I mean, if, look, if you're a 15-year-old City supporter now, right, they're going to be, they're going to be expecting... Yeah, very true. You know, I've, you speak to them and they say, Arsenal? What murder, Arsenal? What are you talking about? <laughs> when I was growing up, you're like, God, it's Arsenal, you know. It's so, funny, I've got the same thing with my boys, because yeah. Leicester won the league. That three of them support Leicester. Well, yeah, and after that, they're, getting, they're now going, they're disappointing when they finish eighth or ninth. I've got, <laughs> a, I've, I've got a son who's eight years old. He's only ever known in his entire life utter dominance. By, and and, and <laughs> when he watches, when I'm watching old things, he's just saying, how do we get beat by Derby? <laughs> he's talking for the half of it, yeah. Um, so I guess there's a generation, I'm in my 50s, 
we're just happy to have lived these great moments so far and seen these great we're players. And that. To yeah, life. so we're told. Totally <laughs> yeah. uh, Vincent, over those ten years, the, the highlights. I mean, there's been the, some amazing moments. I mean, the Aguero moment must be right up there. That was extraordinary. That's it. You've named it. Can't look past it. Can't look around it. That's that's the moment that yeah. defines so much for this club. A lot of the players coming through today and being in this environment. Um, I have to thank probably that squad, but Kun in particular for that goal. To me, he's a hero, and I play with him every day. <laughs> uh, I see him with all his flaws, but then when you know, I just take a step back and I'm like, okay, what this side? He's got plenty, <laughs> but because he's a box player, <laughs> <laughs> a goal hanger. Well, you know, I, I just think this guy is is he's just one of my teammates, he's a friend, and then I look at him and I say. This is how defining it was when I look at this goal. I'm like, this is how defining you've been for my career, for City fans' expectations. What about today. you, Noel? Same? The Aguero moment doesn't happen without him scoring the goal in the derby yeah. mm. six weeks before that, where you have to win that game and you have to beat Man United and, it's, and, it, and they're our neighbours and all that went with it. And for him to score that goal and then for us to stick it out for the last whatever it was, I can't remember when the goal was scored, it was just all the days, the last 20 minutes, half an hour. That was colossal. That, to me, the Aguero moment doesn't happen yeah. without that goal. Yeah. Still go for the Aguero bit. I, actually, I've, well, no, I, yeah, it's yeah, my yeah. favourite Premier League moment. Me, me, me well, too. Apart but from you're, when Leicester won the league. But you're, but, but you're, but you're a neutral. For, exactly. for when, when you step back and you look at it, when a team has to win the last six games, and one of those games is against your local rivals, and it's Ferguson, and it's all that kind of thing, and you're against them, mm. and the captain scores the goal and then they stick it out and it was backs against the wall for the last who knows how long. That must have been your best personal moment, possibly. Um, yeah, but... Or does defending give you more pleasure, perhaps? But defending gives me more pleasure, yeah. definitely. If I can, lot, if I, <laughs> <laughs> well, if I can be on the end of a good tackle against a striker like yourself, then my day is, uh, my week probably is, uh, is, is, is a happy week. But the, the two things those goals have in common, I have to say, is that both goals, I remember, it was just confusion after the goals. When I scored against United and when Kun scored against QPI, it wasn't just happiness, it wasn't just sadness or anything. It was just confusing. What, what confusion? What's happening? We've never been in this position before. We shouldn't be in this position before. United were eight points ahead of us. The, the league was done. We gave up when we lost to Arsenal away. And then just we had this kind of team mentality where because we were fighting in training all the time, and that's the characters we had, which just brought the, it brought the best out of us for the last uh, six games or whatever it was. But confusion is what I remember from those two moments, and they're the only goals that's ever, ever happened in my life, not even in the World Cup or anything. There was a time, probably, Noel, that Oasis was far more known around the world than, than Manchester City. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's, probably, that's probably fair to say. Possibly changed uh, yeah, in recent yeah. times. But One would hope so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I went, I went to, um, uh, I was in Japan last year for the first home game of the season and we just happened to amble into a, we was in Osaka in Japan, we happened to amble into a bar um, and it was full of City fans, but not, not, not English City fans, it was full of Japanese City fans. You turned into Manchester United. Uh, well, <laughs> God forbid, <laughs> but, um, it, and it, but we were like, you know, in this back street in Osaka, yeah. they all had City kits on and they were sitting and uh, we were like, wow, this is, you know, this is the start of something. But, um, I guess there was a time when, well, Oasis would fill me in road. But um, it just goes to show that if you, if you get the right people involved in a football club and you're measured in what you do, you can make great things happen. Can, can, can you see similarities between, between music and football? Do of course. You, yeah, of course. Such as? All musicians. Yeah. I've never met a musician who was any good that didn't want to be a footballer. Would you sooner be a footballer than a musician? Probably earn more money than me now, so I'd probably say yes. I'd rather be. You can do it for life. Well, well, I, you know, it's, it's, would you swap to be? Would you swap? Well, it's a, it's a different thing. Vinny represents an entire city, yeah. and when he goes out onto the pitch, he, he represents an entire club. And if he makes a mistake, um, you know, people's weekends are ruined. Mm. With music, it's different. You rep, you know, you, you're, you're kind of you, you, you're part of. Of a, of a person's night out, but you're still performing in front of big crowds, you know. And I suppose 
People in the audience, even if they recognise a little mistake of yours, it, it wouldn't matter because they're all your fans and they're all cheering you on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Football's a little bit different. It's like we gave him the one at Anfield when they beat us on the run into the second league title. We were like, OK, we'll give him that because he's a good lad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what I want to say as well about both you guys here is, you know, to me, you guys represent longevity. You've been in the game for a long time and you kept on top of it. And what I wanted to say is when I saw Noel and I saw yourself work for the BBC, there is something which I take back into my life, I take back to my teammates and I take back to anybody that wants to know anything about what it is to achieve a high level, is that level of uh, commitment you have and, 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 and almost focus you have for what you're doing. And I think if I want to take something back and say, okay, you know what, this is the city of today, is is that focus to always be at your highest level. You've had 100 points well, it's true. and you, you got, carry you, on. Well, you've got a, I think you've, you're born with a, with a gift but there's also something inside you that drives you on personally. You think, I want to keep doing it, and I want it, and I want it, and I want it. And uh, all the great players seem to have it. All of them. All the players that get to the very, very top, they seem to have that one common thing where they would just had it. I was on holiday recently, and Iron Robin was on his month long break for Bayern Munich. Did he and I got in and bend it in the top <laughs> corner of his I didn't. Well, I seen him in the hotel. He was training every single day with his computer thing on yeah. and um, that said it all to me you know, these are the players that get to the top you know they don't they're not they're not sitting around drinking pina coladas all what, what, what's going to happen this season how's it going to go I, I I want us to win the league I want us to go for every trophy but as the manager said before it's not realistic to mm. I think you take it game by game but um what I want to say is it touches back to what we mentioned about the focus and the standards it's such a tough ask for a squad of 25 players to be focused every single day in training, in games, and to achieve every single uh, day the same standard when you know the team uh, that plays against you will do everything they can to beat you. So because I see that level of focus with the manager and the players, I'm fairly confident that no matter what, we'll finish pretty high up in anything we do this season and there's still four competitions to play for. Yeah. It's going to be close in the league. Well, I, you know, I got up after the Newcastle game and thought, well, that's it. And the one thing you can say about the Premier League is it will consistently make a fool out of you. Because, <laughs> you know, you'll, you'll get up the next morning and, you know, less, uh, Liverpool have dropped points. And on the two times, apart from the year that we got 100 points, the two times we won the league previously, we'd all given it up. Yeah. We'd all given it up. You just don't know. There was a, the, the, the night we are playing at Sunderland at home and we're 2-1 down with seconds left and Nasri miss it's a shot and it squirms in and you just think, wow, you? you know, and then all of a sudden things play out, Steven Gerrard slips. So right now, you can't call it. But I think in any other year, I'd be quietly confident, but Liverpool have been unbelievable this year, like yep. unbelievable. Yeah, they've been very good. And I think it's going to be really close. Uh, gents, we've got, we've got a dinner to go to, you've got to raise some money. And I've got to <laughs> eat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys.